Hello and welcome to the first five minute lesson on biology. I'm going to start teaching biology by talking about what is life. That's often what's covered in chapter one of a lot of biology textbooks and so forth. The thing is that defining what is life is really not that easy. Uh, it's more of a we know it when we see it and so we're going to kind of make a list of things that things are alive do that other things don't. If we try and sit and think what are the things that I, as a human being, require for life? Some of those things uh, are, you know, universal to all living things, but not all, not all, not necessarily. It would be fair to say that a couple of the things that we think of as being essential for life are not. So, for example, breathing oxygen is not essential for all life. In fact, many bacteria, bacteria are alive, by the way. There's no debate about that. Bacteria are alive. But there are many bacteria that die when they're exposed to oxygen. Oxygen is toxic to them. In fact, oxygen would be toxic to us if we weren't using it as part of our metabolism. So, okay, so let's throw that one out. Um, another one of the really common ones to talk about is water. Oh, all life on Earth uh, requires water. Well, yes, on Earth. It's not necessarily required that any life on other planets, if we ever discover it, will require water. Um, it's just really convenient and there's a lot of water here on earth and so that's kind of how uh, we uh, think of life as, as being requiring a lot of water and originating in water and so forth um, but it's not really fair to say that all life in the universe requires water certainly not many things that we would identify as being alive on other planets that we haven't discovered yet maybe don't require water so what is it that really makes something alive so basically to be alive Something has to uh, meet a number of criteria. That primarily, they have to uh, self-propagate. They have to be able to make more of themselves and sustain their own internal environment. And to do that, because of the laws of physics, you, we need to take in energy. So basically, right where I just threw down like three of like the most common things you see of life. Life uh, grows and reproduces. Life maintains homeostasis, which is an important word I'll mention in a second, and life has a metabolism, which means it takes in energy, and processes it somehow, and excretes waste, anything it doesn't use from that. Those are the three things that are most important for life. Um, uh, so primarily, I mentioned that word homeostasis. Homeostasis basically means to maintain, or well, the technical definition, to maintain a constant internal environment despite a dynamic, changing outside environment. What that basically means, uh, uh, for example, uh, humans, we maintain temperature homeostasis. And what does that mean? That means that right now my body is somewhere around 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, approximately, right? And it's 37 degrees Celsius. Well, it's not 37 degrees Celsius in the room here. It's room temperature. It's like 25. If I go outside, it'll be even colder. If I go, you know, somewhere where it's really hot, I go in a sauna, it'll be hotter than my body temperature, but I'll still be 98 degrees in my core. And so that mean, that's homeostasis, essentially. And you can maintain homeostasis for lots of different things. And we do. Um, our bodies have a relatively constant concentration of water and sugar and salt and temperature and pressure, right, blood pressure. We have to maintain those at a constant level because if you go too far one way, you die. And you go too far the other way, you die, right? If we get too hot, we die. If we get too cold, we die. That's homeostasis. And all living things do that. Not necessarily for temperature, though. That's the trick. All living things maintain a number of key things at a constant level. Uh, environment. It's not necessarily temperature. One of the most common ones you'll see is pH. Uh, pH being, if you have a low pH, it's very acidic, and a very high pH is very basic, and so you want to be at the right spot. And we're, our cells are designed to work best in pH 7, so if our blood starts to go above or below the pH that it's assigned to, our body has mechanisms that will expend energy in order to kind of keep it at the right spot, like a thermostat, basically, for temperature and for sugar and so forth, for all kinds of things. That's homeostasis. And to do that requires taking in energy because of the second law of thermodynamics primarily, right? You can't just do work for free. You have to put energy in. So that's basically what living things do. They take in energy. They uh, change it somehow to make it work for them so that they maintain homeostasis and they get rid of the waste products. And they keep doing that, and at some point, they, as a species, will continue to make more. Maybe a number of individuals of a species might be sterile, but they're still alive, 
because they're part of a species that uh, is carries characteristics of life. Okay, so I hope that kind of clears things up. That's kind of just the basics. Um, and next lesson, I'm going to talk more about the cell, which is uh, has a lot to do with the definition of life.